Welcome back to Flow Track, everyone. Kevin Selly here with Carl Lewis here to break down another race. And today we're gonna to look at Fred Curley's European 100 meter debut. This is really when he burst onto the scene ahead of his stunning Olympic performance, going against a good field here with Justin Gatlin and Andre de Grasse. Mm -hmm. Carl, I'm just gonna press play and I'll have you talk us through it. Well, the first thing about this race, I think that Fred probably ran the most consistent and best of anyone in the world last year. He ran the same race. And if you see there, it doesn't look like he's running that fast because he's creating the momentum, like I said. And the one thing I would tell Fred is to get that head up a little bit earlier because that, that shouldn't be a deliberate thing. You let your head go with your body. It's the old thing like, why should I worry about breathing if I do it anyway? <laughs> you know. Um, so if, if you look at this race, you'll see, illustrate two things because I've seen this before. Fred came out of the blocks, came up into a running position, his hands are up, his feet are down, and he's stroking. Where Justin tried to stay low, well, when Justin was low, Fred was leaving him. Mm -hmm. So that goes back to the whole thing of, oh, you gotta stay low and drive. No, Fred was leaving him when he was low and he didn't stop leaving him until Justin actually came up to mm -hmm. run. But by then it's too late. And then Justin started leaning at the end, trying to catch him again. So let's just watch this again. And you'll see how Justin stays down and Fred's up and running and just runs away from him. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing. He ran consistently and relaxed the entire season. See, he's up, look at Justin down. Now he just now he just pops his head up. Right there? Yeah, but see, if you go back a little bit more, look how low Justin is down. Now Fred's, Fred's shoulder's up. Now look at every, look across the line. So Fred's head's down, but his body's up. Mm -hmm. The grass is leaning over. Uh, Justin's leaning way over. Um, this guy in lane seven's leaning way over. See, see the whole thing is that they they're, have this concept of drive phase, mm -hmm. and it's not, it's acceleration. So Fred is up accelerating and they're driving. So now if we go a little bit farther, you'll see how Fred just moves away because he's the one up. Look at that. Gets into his he's up. Now, now look at Justin still trying to come back, but it's too late. Mm -hmm. And that's why we can't worry about where you are in the first few meters. But when those guys were down in their drive phase, so-called, he was up and running. And you see him there, see, hands up, here again. Look, what we're look at the back elbow, look at the hands up. It's, it's, it's the same, and then as it goes down, you'll see that arm swinging back, it opens up, because that gives you more power. Look, there we go. And that's really what it is. It's, it's, it's the same thing, just like Elaine Thompson, they come out, they come up out of the blocks, they stroke their arm, the thumb comes up to the eye, the elbow goes to the sky, and on the back, their hand goes down through the pocket. Mm -hmm. And it's just the same thing. But what happens is that Fred ran those races early, was able to get a rhythm, mm -hmm. and he just ran the same rhythm all year. Get another look at it from a different angle. See, here. see this? You see their hands coming up, mm -hmm. and you go, see it opening up on the way back swing, and he's tall, and that's the difference. And so when you really comes down to it, um, spring, spring. Look at the hands right there. Spring is yeah. based on science. Look at the difference of the three. The grass is up now. Now that he's up and running, look at the grass's position. See their hand is up. Yeah. Fred's hands up. Their elbows high in the back, mm -hmm. and they're pushing off the ground. Because what happens when your arm opens up on the back swing, mm -hmm. it leaves the foot on the ground longer so you can push longer. But when you shorten the stride, the leg shortens, so therefore you're pulling off the ground. And, and that's a good position uh, for them to be right there. So let's just, get, and, and now another thing too, look at the relaxation with, with DeGrasse and Fred mm -hmm. and look at the tightness in Justin. Yeah. Because now he's trying to catch and, and catch him at the end instead of just having the release come to him. I always tell them, don't get to the finish line, let the finish line come to you. From this shot, DeGrasse looks like the model of running form. Well, he, yeah, he, he, his, his elbow's up, his arms are up, his hand is up high there, and he's pushing. You see how far back the back leg is? Mm -hmm. That means he stayed on the ground pushing. Fred is, is a little bit earlier in his stride, but the same thing, the bottom line is that these guys are staying on the ground long enough to create enough force to move forward mm -hmm. instead of trying to get their feet back on the ground. That's why your feet have to stay on the ground, push on the ground, and cycle. Mm -hmm. They cannot stay close to the ground, mm -hmm. no matter what people want to say. It has to cycle. We, the cycling pattern has to be like a bicycle, not like an old one. Fred, I mean, can you tell from this that he hasn't run before this many hundreds over the past several years? Um, well, the thing is, that, see the hands coming up. The thing is, yeah. the, the thing about it with Fred is that it's under underlooked is that he did sprint in high school, mm -hmm. and he kind of moved up to the four hundred. Right. So, so it isn't really as foreign as people think, and I think we oftentimes in society want to take things in a vacuum. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I looked back, and he actually ran some good hundreds. Yeah. Um, coming in, so 
he's, he's just doing what people have been doing. I mean, look, years ago we realized that if you were to run a fast 400, you run a fast 100. Tommy Smith was a world record holder in the 200. He ran a fast 100 mm -hmm. and a fast 400. Right. So this isn't anything new. It's just something that people are getting to understand again. And then with Michael Johnson, and he had his double, 2-4 double, mm -hmm. now we're just coming down a little bit farther. Mm -hmm. What about his elbow as it comes out right here? A bit. Is, I mean, I'm just contrasting him to the grass, yeah. who's well, very tight in. Well, the difference, the difference in the two is that if you can see Fred's left hand, it's the palm is back. Mm -hmm. So what you want to do is keep your palm to the body, so your your arm stays straight. That's why his arm goes out a little bit because of the palm is back. So he needs to turn the palm towards his hip, mm -hmm. and that's it. But he he runs well. He stays relaxed, and that's a small thing. But guess what? We're we're talking about just minuscule things and the difference. I mean. I ask kids all the time, I mean, if you could gain one inch, it's one inch, but how many races have you lost by an inch? Mm -hmm. <laughs> because that's a hundredth of a second. Yeah. So um, that's the one thing that he could do there. But other than that, he pushes well, he comes up well, and he stays relaxed. He's just running relaxed. See, and, and the, the right hand doesn't do it. Mm -hmm. So if you go back just a little bit, it'll, it'll illustrate what little bit of a difference it is. Now watch his right arm, which stays, his palm stays in, mm -hmm. And watch how high his hand goes and the left arm and the elbow movement. And then the left arm, the palm goes back and how it's a little bit different. Okay. Just that little movement of the wrist makes a difference in the, in the arm stroke. Yeah. So, so just those little things. And, and the thing about it is that the first thing you do is that you want to push out of the blocks. You want to learn that part. Mm -hmm. But then the time comes down. But then all of a sudden you start doing different things and it gets down more. Um, the Olympic Games was a perfect example. Mm -hmm. Fred Curley ran the best there. Mm -hmm. And I, he, when he came to the final, he had a race to duplicate. Yeah. Um, Jacobs was way over in lane two, mm -hmm. where he couldn't see anyone, or lane something, he couldn't see anyone. Mm -hmm. And um, Ronnie Baker yeah. was still worried about the semifinal. Yeah. So ultimately, the guys who ran the best won the race. Mm -hmm. With this, it brings up a question I have always when I watch sprinters. It seems like fixing form versus going with natural movement. How do you decide what to fix and what to let go because they're more comfortable running that way? Well, well basically, running and spring and running is based on science as well. Follow the science. Um, and we, we can say that everyone runs a certain way, mm -hmm. but the science says there's a certain way to run correctly. And so what you want to do is, is duplicate that correct running motion, which are the things we're talking about. It's not based on something that I did. It's based on science. Right. Um, back in the 1980s, Coach Telez worked with me, went down to NASA, took some papers, and he was thinking, I think this is correct. <laughs> took video down there, spoke to people there saying, is this? So he came up with this scientific model of running based on movement, mm -hmm. and it wasn't just you know running down the track. Whether it's the start, the positions, the force, because we know the forces that you need to have in order to push on the ground. So these are all things that were based on science. So that's what I would say. Mm -hmm. and, and, the, and the thing is that, you can't get caught up in there where they're good now, so I'm just gonna leave them alone. Right. No, you want to you want to try to be the perfect runner, mm -hmm. and there is a perfect running motion because that's based on science. Mm -hmm. Great, great stuff, Carl. Thank you. Yeah.